guys, how you doing? It's Henry. At Motors and Blowers! Good morning. Uh, just taking care of some loose ends that are in my backyard. Just get them knocked out so all of them work. Everything that I have in the backyard all work and run. Recently on a past episode, I just got this working. Previously on Mowers and Blowers. I'm Mowers and Blowers! <laughs> you know, I put about a mix a little. Mommy knows. Apparently, it was always working. I just didn't put any gas in it. Let's test that theory. Put gas in it yesterday and it ran. Let's see if it starts up easily. Let's not even prime it. Because I find that these things start up pretty easily without even priming. I will choke it though. Keys on, not priming. Watch. Awesome. Now yesterday when I was testing it, <laughs> it was like a fog machine white smoke blowing all over the place. I let it run for about 10 minutes and stuff and it subsided a little. Usually uh, two stroke engines smoke a lot because you either mixed it too much oil to gas ratio, which is what I always do because I always feel that having more oil in the mix is better for the engine than if you had too little oil. Because if the, without the lubrication on two strokes, because it doesn't have an oil reservoir, you know what I mean? It's lubricated just from the oil that's mixed in your gas. That's how it works. And if you don't have enough uh, oil in it, it'll eventually ruin the bore and you'll have scratches and stuff and wear and all that. So uh, as you saw, there was minimal smoke at startup. So there's, a, there's another way you could subside the uh, smoke. If you have a two stroke engine that smokes a lot, I mean like a fog machine, Usually there's a spark arrestor that's near your exhaust, either behind your uh, muffler or something like that. And it's like a mesh thing and it builds up carbon from all the use over the years. You could take a torch and just like burn all that crap off or just brush it off with a wired brush and stuff. And that ought to fix it. That's it, just the uh, fuel air mixture is what it is. Uh, but these things, the uh, single stage snow blowers here in Long Island, New York, uh, these days, they don't get a lot of money at all. I'd be lucky to get 50, 70 bucks out of this thing, you know what I mean? I have it listed for 150 because it's in pretty good shape, but you know, there's a lot of room for negotiation. Anyway, so this is ready to go if somebody wants it, right? I've got like three or four in my backyard. I just gotta see if they run, you know what I mean? I haven't touched them in years. So I'm gonna drag the next one out. This is your typical uh, old Craftsman, five horsepower, two stroke, single stage. Uh, got this a while back, a few years. Gave it to my neighbor friend who used it for a while. Uh, then, actually he never used it. And then it, we didn't get much snow last year. So his parents, whatever moved. So he gave it back to me again. And uh, I haven't started it since. There's gas in here. What do you guys think? Just fire it up, fire it up. Let's see. Oh, it has electric start. Cool. Uh, let's prime it a couple times. Choke. <laughs> what do you guys think? Short rope.
try the electric start. I want to say maybe the electric start doesn't work because I think the motor's busted. The gears are messed up. Right. Wow, works! a little bit, not gonna go crazy. Mix it up a little. Again, all it needed was some gas. <laughs> um, you notice that when I engaged the auger, it kept on spinning even after I disengaged it. And when I felt the cable, it was very, um, you know, it was very taut. <laughs> so you lift this up and you can move it two clicks down to give it some more slack so that wasn't always engaged. And now it disengages. So this wire was too tight and the minute you touched it like a quarter inch or something like that, it would engage it and uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't disengage. So just just loosened it a couple of clicks. Fixed. Got this other one. Same thing, just green. <laughs> Five horsepower crossman 21 inch. Wow. Has a... Uh, let's start also this one's in a little bit of rough shape here as you notice the handles here have been kind of macgyvered together with electrical tape and some hose clamps i think this all this needs is just a little bit of banging to get the uh, handles more closed like that because they were pulled out more it has a key primer feels good you know the rubber full handle it's 40 to 1. It's missing the side 
thing here. It's got tape all over it over here. But uh, let's check the gas. That seems to be the culprit. I haven't touched these things in years. So that's why I don't think there's any gas in here. We'll put some gas in here and we'll try this one. This one's in this one's in kind of rough shape. Has a lot of problems with it. Now this says 40 to one, now well, that said 50 to one, which means you put less oil than gas. Talking about smidgen, very little to even, you know, think about it. Holy cow, holy cow, that sucks. Oh, gas leaked out. Well, I'm not gonna be able to test this right now because the gas just pours out. So uh, obviously the needle is not seating and it's over flooding the carburetor or the hose is off or something, you know? Can't really tell right now. Unless I take this thing apart, which I don't really feel like doing. So to figure out what the oil leak was or the gas leak, uh, I took the panel apart. The panel had a wire going through here, holding this governor lever that way. <laughs> I don't know why, because it seems like it's okay. You move it around, it's fine, you know? So maybe he hooked it there just to give it like full power. You know, I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, loosen the uh, jet nut out of here and it's clogged with like all kinds of crap in it. The holes filled with stuff. So I have a feeling that this is really dirty. Yuck. Gross, like cement. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It looks like cement. Disgusting. So I'm not surprised. Uh, needle wasn't seating. Oh my God, look. It's not even moving. This part here is all rusted to hell, not even moving. That's why it was leaking, because it was either held open or held closed, whatever. Mm, all right, got it all loosened up. Let me get some carb cleaner. We'll spray this out a little bit. We'll take off the float, see if it's leaking. You know, the float, you shake it, see if there's uh, gas in it. I'll be honest with you, I haven't cleaned the carburetor in a while. <laughs> I've been lucky, I didn't ha haven't had to do it. I've been Messing with stuff like, you know, tractors and stuff. I haven't I haven't done a carburetor in a while. <laughs> Not that I really want to, but so this is really corroded. You move this around, just try to push the pin out. I wanna take out the uh, float so I could see if it, you know, I might need a punch, but sometimes it's tricky to do the punch because you could break it and then you're gonna have to go get a new carburetor. I need a punch. I'm gonna punch from the bottom because there's more of it, but I can't really get to it though.
This is the one with the spring in there. I don't want to take it out. <laughs> because you'll never get the spring back the way it's supposed to be. You just won't. I've tried it many times. It feels like it's dry. I just wanted to test the float to see whether or not... Oh, hell. Because it's not going to work right if I take the spring out. I know it. You know what? It's not even on there anyway. Spring's trashed anyway, see? You guys see that little spring? I know some of you guys think I'm crazy. Wood spring? There's a spring that I guess keeps it open. <laughs> and it never works right if you don't have it in there. So this one may not work. Oh, son of a gun, where did that go? Anyway, you shake the float. It's dry, it's good. This looks good too. Usually the there's a rubber seat in there. If it's messed up, it's not gonna seat. It's probably messed up. Actually, it looks okay. So I'm gonna clean this up a little. It's probably really stiff. Okay, that's, the emulsion's clear. Clear! Is a jet nut. Yep, it's clogged. Can't even get, get the needle through there. There we go. And I want to say that there might be one here too. The little one. Check and see if there's a little one. You know, kind of like the lawnmower ones. The hell? There we go, it's clear. Now it's clear. I saw from time lapse, I cleaned the carburetor completely. Uh, there was a lot of varnish and uh, built up um, ethanol. And I tried it, I put it like that, and it was still leaking. I saw where it was leaking from, and it was the end of the um, fuel line had a split in it right here. See the split? It was leaking right from there. So there was enough hose to go straight to the carburetor. So I just cut the end where the split is and just attached it. And as you can see, this end was all busted. So it was leaking from there. It wasn't really leaking from the carburetor at all. So look, now it's not leaking anymore. Carburetor's clean. Yes, we are missing that little spring that I think keeps the float down. Why would you want to keep it down? Because if you keep it down, you're not seeding it. So it's going to overflow. But I have had these snowblowers before where if you don't put the spring back in there, uh, it won't run right. I have bought a carburetor just, for get the, just to get the spring before. But that spring was corroded and in pieces. So we couldn't have used that. I mean, I don't know. All the other Tecumseh ones that I've had, they, I mean... There is models that I've, I've seen that spring, you know, and it doesn't work right if you don't have that spring. Listen, I'm not going to lose sleep over this, okay? It's worth like 50 bucks, if anything, you know? But the, I, I think the, uh, I don't know if the, um, 
electric start works. Let's try that first. So it's not leaking. It's got gas going to it. We put quite a bit in there. I, I think I remember one of these snow, snow blowers has the electric start, but it doesn't work. I remember that. I'm pretty sure this is the one that does not work. Let's find out. I'm not gonna prime it, we'll just try it. This is one that doesn't work. I think the Bendix gear is all messed up and it's a pain in the ass to get to it, so I'm not even gonna try it. I'm not even gonna try it. But the motor works. Some people may want the motor. Should I take out the motor? <laughs> uh, you know what? You have to take the whole engine off to get the motor off. It's a pain in the ball. Pain in the balls. I'm not gonna try it. Let's just try to pull start it and see what happens. How about that? First pull, huh? Didn't even prime it. actually runs the best out of these three <laughs> that's great and see if it if it still leaks it has something to do with the leaking see it does drop a couple of drops so I think it's coming from the gasket of the nut that's where it's coming from because I'm feeling around oh it is wet so it's not stopping. It's not stopping the gas fully from coming out. Let's try there. Maybe it's the gasket that's around the bowl. The bowl gasket could be bad. Because it's not supposed to leak. So I'll dry it again, see where it's coming from. So it's not coming from there anymore. It's coming from the bottom. Let's, let's dry that a little bit more. Yep. It's the bowl gasket. Um, it's the jet nut bat, uh, gasket is is bad. I'm going to have to fix that. It's not the bowl gasket. It's the jet. Okay. <clears throat> Just got carried away. Uh, I found out that it wasn't the jet nut, uh, the bowl nut gasket. It was the bowl. The bowl itself was rusty right here and it wasn't making a good seal, right? It was rusty. Had like parts missing from the hole. So I went and found another Tecumseh bowl, put it on there, and it stopped the leak, okay? And then uh, I also fixed the handles. I took these handles off, everything that they had here. Look at this. Look at the amount of tape and hose clamps that they used to clamp that top handle to the bottom handle. And the reason why is that you're snow blowing and you're moving that handle so much, right? That handle is no longer concave, shaped as uh, shaped round that wraps around the bottom handle, right? It becomes straight. So therefore, when you move it all the time, it bends flat. And so I took my uh, vise and I put it, I took the handle off, put it in a vise, and I clamped it, and that flatness turn to round again. So once it got round, you can slip it right onto the bottom handle 
and it's fixed. But look at all the stuff he had. He had nails in there to act, act as splints or spacers to make the clamp tighter. So four nails to hold it together, uh, like a whole roll of electrical tape, right? And this thing came out, this is like the insulation for the uh, chute, the rotation of the chute. But once it splits there, it's not gonna stay there. Not to mention it's just dissolved rubber, I mean, uh, foam anyway, and it's bad. I just, I just ripped it out. So we uh, cleaned the carburetor, changed the bowl, the fuel bowl to stop the leak. Um, fixed the fuel line, <laughs> took this apart. Uh, I fixed the handle so it doesn't have all this mess over there. Works just fine. And uh, now it runs and starts. And it runs better than these other two. <laughs> you know, I know, why am I wasting so much time on $50 things? It's because I don't feel good if they don't work. If they're sitting in my yard, they need to be running and working. Otherwise, I don't feel good. It's my OCD kicking in, you know? And, uh, you know, at least now we got these three running. <laughs> these two really didn't have too many problems. Just got to put gas in them. <laughs> This one was kind of a pain in the balls, but you know, it was fun. It was entertaining. I, I enjoy doing it. It's a nice day out. Why not sit out here and just use your brain a little bit, you know? So uh, let me clean this up and we'll give her a fire up and see what happens. Here's a better look at the stuff that was remaining. Just a ton of stuff, wires, jigging it, rigging it. And this is what I did, see? This part became flat, so putting it in a vise made it round again, so that it wrapped around the second handle. I put a new um, wing nut thingamajig to tighten, and now the top handle wraps right around the bottom handle, just great. Holds it nice and steady. No movement. No leaks. It's okay. It's not bad. It's not good. But it's not bad. The spark plug cover back on. Oh, uh, don't worry, guys. There's nothing going on. I can. You can hear a lot of sirens, but it's just Santa. Santa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Santa comes every year, say hello. Here we go. Hello. Also the smoky one. Anyway, today we got three snow blowers going. <laughs> From my garage sitting for over a year, getting them fired up. Those two just needed gas. This one needed quite a bit, uh, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. Anyway, there's football on Saturday now, so I'm gonna go in and watch it. Hope you guys enjoyed my snow blower revitalization for the uh, winter season coming up. Hopefully, we'll sell these for more than 50 bucks each. Thanks a lot for joining me. We'll see you guys next time. Bows and bows. Because the UPS guy screwed this up. I'm the see you guys next time on Mowers.